These are the 12 most patented cannabinoids. And I'd like to today to do a little bit of a tutorial that helps people walk through these acronyms. And at the risk of uh, inducing some anxiety related perhaps to uh, bad experiences in an OCHEM class for some of you, I gotta say the way to do that is to think about the structures of these compounds. So these are the structures of these 12 cannabinoids. Um, and I've done this before and I'll be pretty quick. So we're gonna start just by focusing on CBD. So on the right is what we refer to as a line angle structure. Every bond or every kink or corner represents a carbon atom. The molecule has 21 of these carbon atoms. Those 30 hydrogens that sort of decorate it, we just remove. We know they're there. And then after that, it starts to resemble the line angle structure. Um, now, let's divide this cannabinoid into three parts. Let's call them face, core, and tail. And then let's just count carbon atoms on each one. So the face will have 10 carbon atoms. The core has six and the tail has five. And the reason I do this is because it makes it pretty convenient to compare between CBD and THC. When you do it this way, you can see that the difference between these two molecules lies entirely in the face. Carbon number eight is suddenly connected, bound to, to the, one of the oxygens in the core. And that is the only difference between um, CBD and THC. And three additional kind of pretty predominant scaffolds in the chemical scaffolds in the space are CBG, CBC, and CBN. And as you can see in these guys, the core is also the same. The tail is also the same. The only thing that changes is the face. Um, and in all cases, the face has the same kind of architecture with 10 carbon atoms. So knowing that, I can tell you that if you wanted to understand all of the cannabinoids, you would need to just know 10 phases, and four of them are THC. And by far the most dominant THC ones are the delta-9 and the delta-8, and they differ in just the position of the double bond. And then there are six others, CBD, CBN, and CBG, are the, and CBC are the most common, CBE and CBL are the less common. There are just two cores, one that we call regular or neutral, and we, one that we call acid. Chemically, we just add this functionality. I've circled in orange there. It's called a carboxylic acid. And when a cannabinoid molecule has that, we put an A at the end of it. And uh, the process of decarboxylation is actually removing that, which happens organically, naturally. When you heat a molecule, the acid falls off, and you lose the A. Right? Um, you don't need an enzyme or a plant for that, just some temperature. And then the tail... Uh, you know, cannabinoids have been found all the way from C1 up to C7, but the only ones that are really significant in the plant are the C5 and the C3 cannabinoids. And we call the C5s just regular ones, and the C3 we call varins. The next two most common are uh, C4 and C7. Um, so knowing that, hopefully some of you guys are, would be pretty comfortable if you see THC also recognizing that a, a change to the tail is still a cannabinoid, right? Still in the THC variety, we just add a V and call it a varin. A change to the acid, we just add an A, right? And then the CBD family, I did both of those. And if you make a change to the tail and add the acid, you just add both letters, okay? So you, you call it a CBD VA. Now, I'd like to contrast that with nabalone, right? Nabalone does not have one of those tails. Okay. It does not exist in the plant. And if you're just looking for a linear tail, anybody can just see that nabalone does not have it. Okay. Even if you don't recognize that the face of nabalone also has a feature that's not in the plant, that we call that a, a ketone, that's not natural. And then the other thing I've drawn there doesn't resemble any cannabinoid at all. Okay. If you see a molecule like this, they're still called synthetic cannabinoids. And the reason is because... Um, they hit the CB1 receptor really hard, right? And so does nabalone. Nabalone's much more potent agonist of CB1 than THC. And for that reason, these synthetic compounds can be used for the same purpose, right? Um, for the biology associated with agonism of the CB1 receptor, but not any other uh, receptors that THC may target. So that's it. That's the tutorial. Congratulations. 
survive the organic chemistry class.